Hello, everybody. Welcome to Finding Brave. This is Kathy Caprino. And how are you doing this week? How is it? Are you having brave? Are you finding that you're falling down a little bit on that falling down? My guest and I, Audrey, and I were just chatting. Um, again, I still am suffering from that back pain from the back sprain. And wow, it, it, it's, uh, how would I put it? It's frustrating, but there are so many lessons, so many lessons about our limits and about how we're actually not taking care of ourselves. You know, we might be taking care of our mind and learning and reading, but the body's so essential to do what you want to do. So I would invite you to go along this journey with me and be gentler with, with yourself and see where you're maybe pushing your physical limits. Uh, because in some ways, it's braver to admit that there are limitations. Sometimes that's just hard to admit. There we go. That's the lesson for the day. And I'm so excited to have our guest, Audrey Bolock, today, who I was just sharing with Audrey. Sometimes, you know, I have a career coach on or a writer and, and I'm in that world. So, you know, I'm right there with them. But in this case, what we're going to talk about, I really don't know much about at all. And we're talking about the power of image and how to create your own style signature, not signature style. Right, Audrey? Did I get it right? <laughs> yes. He's got some incredible right. tips for us, and I think we're going to learn so much. So, Audrey, let me read everybody. Uh, uh, Audrey's background. Since 1994, Audrey Bolock is the style strategist and secret weapon of prominent executives, entrepreneurs, and change agents. She's the creator of the Profile Workbook, A Systemized Way to Identify Your Personal Style. I mean, I cannot wait. So thank you for taking the time, Audrey. So appreciate from Washington State. Ooh, lucky you. So let's jump in. First of all, there is so much style information and we're so bombarded, aren't we? Um, even in looking in the media or social media or wherever we turn, what we are to look like and how to figure that out. But I have a feeling you have a better way. But what are you seeing? You know, why is it so hard to figure out our own style? What, what's in the way? Oh, that's a great question, Kathy. I think it is really hard to find our own style because there's so much information out there, but so little of it has to do with the individual. So what you have is all of this broad-based information that doesn't get down to what I need or what you need, or what this person needs. And to try and wade through all of that information can be one, time consuming. Second, it can be confusing, mm -hmm. because okay. it does point to a culturally accepted way of being, or what the market thinks we should look like, as opposed to how good we feel when we find that connection with ourselves and can bring that through with our clothing. Oh, I love it. So do you work with men and women or mostly women? I, I don't know the answer to that. Who is I your... work with both. I started mm -hmm. out, I started sewing when I was five years old. <gasps> and then once I graduated university with my degree in clothing and textiles under the home act, I went to Seattle Central Community College and found a gentleman there that still taught tailoring, very old school, still drafting patterns, all the hand stitching, how many mm -hmm. hand stitching go into rolling a collar, all of that. Wow. And so from that, I felt I was very well qualified to work both with men and women oh, in terms of exciting. and what the coat says about the person, all of that. So yes, I start out with more men and now right now I have more women. Wow. And you know that we talk here on the show about uh, connecting the dots and understanding what you're passionate about. And sometimes that emerges at a very young age. So you were sewing at, what did you say, age five? Year five. I was making what? sock dolls. I saw something, yeah, I think it was good <laughs> housekeeping on how to make these little sock dolls. So when no one was looking, I would go to my father's drawer and get a sock. Like I would just pick one and then I'd go and I'd make the doll and I was like, oh, not quite right yet. So then I go get the other sock. Wow. And pretty soon he was like, where are all my socks? Oh, that's the cutest thing in the world. So I showed him my little collection of dolls. Oh, did that run in your family, that kind of creativity? Oh, too? yes. My oh, grandmother has sewn for years. She made ah. beautiful clothing. Wow. My mother sewed. And just, I remember she made me a green velvet jumper and it was the first time I ever learned what it was like to sew on velvet. Very tricky. Oh, wow. <laughs> I love it. So that's the background to where you got where you are. All right. Oh, yes. And so, my mother loved clothes. Love them. 
Wow. So, did she have a beautiful style as well? I'm guessing. She did. She had a beautiful style. She and she hung on to her clothes for years because they were just so well made and suited her. Wow. There was no reason to sort of break out of that because they were timeless classics. Oh wow, that's beautiful. All right. Tell us what we need to understand. I think that there are certainly men who listen to the podcast, but I think probably the majority are women. So either way you you want to handle it uh, is fine. But Tell us the basics. What if, if I came to you and hired you and said, oh, I'm really lost. And I do want to throw this into the mix, Audrey. You tell me, but I am 58. Everybody knows that. I mention it. But when I hit 50, I, there were two things that happened. Um, early on, about 18 years ago, I left corporate life. And okay. I realized that my corporate clothes were a uniform. Like I'd walk in the house and strip them off and they were not me. And which, which is quite telling because that whole career wasn't really me. Right? <laughs> uh, but I realized even being out of the corporate world all these years, there's still things like, for instance, hair. I decided, because I always had my hair about here, mm-hmm. I want to have long hair. That's what I want. But, you know, I think in our society, they look at 58-year-old women or 60-year-old women and there's this pressure. You shouldn't have long flowing hair. So- I want to throw that in. When is it that your uniform is actually not you and and what that means and how to change that? Do you know what I mean when I say that? I do. And I think that's really such an excellent question because it also points to the fact that if we're wearing things that don't feel like us, we could be in the wrong career. It could not be a great fit. And sometimes we do have to kind of gut it through. But the fact that you like, repelled these clothes the minute you got home and looked for what we call our comfy clothes (laughs) to put on it you know it speaks to the fact that it's like that's not satisfying to you you're trying to get away from that so if you came to me as a client yeah we would talk a little bit about that we would also talk about what you what you find satisfying in your style and look for patterns that connect that. My uh, profile starts out with a whole set of questions that really are more things like, what type of music do you like? If you could have any car you wanted with no conditions, what would that be? And most people think, oh, somebody would say Maserati, but I've had people say, oh, a 1955 Chevy truck. Or, you know, You start looking at the style development through these questions. A great question I always ask people, Mm -hmm. if you only had five minutes to get ready and you wanted to look good, barring being an event or something specific like that, what would you put on? Wow. And so it's like that really distills down to like, you know, what, what is the most important element of that for you? And how do you get out the door and still feel connected to who you are. And I think those are the really important. Those are great questions. So, uh, you know, um, of course I'm gonna use myself as a guinea pig here because I'm guessing a lot of listeners are similar. Um, One thing that comes to mind is I no longer can wear really pointed shoes because Mm -hmm. uh, too much information, but I have a bunion and I can't wear them. And I notice whenever I'm at an event, I can wear something that approximates a heel and you know, they're not horrible, Mm -hmm. I'm not in, sneakers. But I noticed, you know, I was trying to tell the men in my life, there's so much pressure for women to wear heels in particular Mm -hmm. events. And if you walk through the airport, here's stiletto heels. Like the last thing I'd ever do is wear stiletto heels going to my airplane, you know, but um, that's not a judgment. That's like, I couldn't do it. I'd break, break a bone, you know? (laughs) So (laughs) do you, you know, when we're talking about all the pressure that comes from society or the media, how do you help people? I'm guessing women might say, I don't even know how to answer your question. I don't even know how to answer um, if I were to have five minutes and want to look good, what would I wear? So is that part of the problem that we don't trust our instincts or we're so confused or the things that society tells us to wear, we no longer can wear. We get so many conflicting messages and 50 is such a transitional point. I mean, our bodies are so different. Right. Oh, right. Um, Menopause is either coming, has come, in the process. <laughs> Won't leave. Of, like, yeah, you know, which you can't get rid of. <laughs> you know, so these things start changing. And also, too, we have to realize, you know, we're just not young anymore. So things that 
someone who's 22, 25, isn't going to look the same on us. And so all of those conflicting messages, all of those cultural, um, what do I want to say? Just these cultural inputs, like you should have, you should wreck your feet because it looks so Gosh. much better. You should wear things that crush your core organs because that looks better to us. So I think also too at 50, yeah. we're also at the point where we're strong enough to say, you know, that message isn't working for me anymore. I think when we connect with our clothing and what we're wearing, it fortifies us not to listen to those messages because we feel good. We feel empowered. We feel triggered by the confidence of connecting. Oh, I love and that. so it changes the game a lot yeah. to actually put those things aside and say, you know, no judgment. If you want to wear them, you feel great in them. That's wonderful. But for this event, flats do me great. Oh, I love that. You know, it, what a message. If we could be free to really... I mean, I think why people have a problem answering what is my style is we've almost lost touch with um, who, who we really are authentically. So many people, especially people in the corporate environment where, you know, there are kind of unspoken rules. So tell us about, you talk about why having, a, it's not, that gets me messed up. It's style signature, not signature style, right? Mm -hmm. Tell Absolutely. us about that and why you say that it, it gives you more power or it gives you an edge. Can you talk about that? Mm -hmm. So, you know, signature style is a little contrived. It's in, whatever the trends are. And it's a little bit where it diminishes us because it's again, prescriptive where this and the external world will approve of you instead of where this and you will approve of yourself. And I think that's a really big difference because if you think about it, we've been torturing ourselves for a lot of years. So to actually, and you don't really feel how much the hammer hurts until you stop hitting yourself with it. Oh, what a great saying. And so it's like, you want the freedom to express yourself. We've earned it. And when you start looking at style pattern start looking at what triggers you yes you know, most people I'm writing them down yeah so look at patterns really, first yes so what do you feel alive in when you get dressed what do you feel great in what really just that moment when your skin flushes and your eyes get bright and you're just like oh i could wear this forever oh that's beautiful i don't know that i have that experience too often <laughs> I'll, I'll pay attention. But Kathy, think about when you did put something on that you just loved. You didn't need anyone to tell you it looked good. You didn't have to have that affirmation. It just was like, yes, this clicked. I feel like me. I think that's one of the greatest compliments I get from my clients is when they say, I feel like myself now. Oh, that's beautiful. After whatever, 30, 40 years, I finally feel like me. Oh gosh, who, who wouldn't want that? So tell us about, are there some basics that you would tell a beginner on this? Uh, for instance, I met with two wonderful guys who um, do bespoke mm -hmm. fashion. That's the way you say it, right? Yeah. And uh, they were looking at my coloring and they, one thing they said was there's a lot of contrast, dark and lighter. And I had a black and white thing on. And so they, they thought that that meant I understood my own, my own, what would you say? Coloring. The, the coloring. Style. Yeah. And the contrast and somehow unconsciously replicated it mm -hmm. in, in the clothes. Uh, so fascinating, right? So are there some color things that we should be you know, when you're teaching a beginner, um, are mm -hmm. there some basics that you're not going to lay it on us as rigid, but some things to think about? What should we know? Well, color's a huge topic. So I'm just going to distill it down a little bit into just kind of the bite-sized chunks. Beautiful. And the color system I prefer using is that there's two base tones. There's blue Ooh. base or there's yellow base. Nice. And there's it's like baking a cake. You can bake a cake with wheat flour or you can bake a cake with spelt flour. Now you're going to end up with a cake, but they're going to have slightly different characteristics. Wow. So you can start out blue base or your yellow base. Blue or yellow. And 
these are huge color categories. So it's inaccurate to say that all blue base colors are cool tone and all yellow base colors are warm tone. There's a presence of warm and cool in each one of these bases. Mm. It's just which one makes you look better. If you went back to old school draping where they used to hold the colors up under your right. chin, yeah, they're still looking for when your eyes, skin, and hair all come into harmony. So what colors do you put on that you feel that surge from? That it's like, this just feels good. I love this. What, what lights you up? You know, as these gentlemen that did the bespoke were telling you, you know, there's, there is a mirroring with ourselves. What colors put us in our most enhanced light? Do you think everybody, I think about my own closet and I know, for instance, oranges, yellows don't work for me as much no. as, I mean, red could, but that makes such a big statement. So I'm careful yes. about that, right? Woohoo, yeah. there's the red. But um, <laughs> do you think mo most people would, if you ask them that question and they told you the colors would that they like the best, would they be the colors that you would pick? Are most people right on with-, with Most people are right on. Wow. It's that much. You already know that yellow and orange, like I can see looking at you, yellow and orange, you're not going yeah, anywhere just, near. And it even that makes really, me look like a, something yeah. you know, we don't like. But it doesn't make you look good, bottom line. And you're not attracted to them. Right. But I can bet what's in your closet. Tell me. You have black, you have gray. Have yes. You have taupe. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. What would, and blue is probably your accent color. Oh, interesting. You okay. know, I'm a little bit more of that comes into play, you know, darker burgundy tones. Oh yeah. A like lot that. of that. A lot of that. Um, evergreen or sp what they call spruce green, maybe mm. that bluier green. Oh, I love that color. Yeah. See these colors, even your expression, wow. naming off these colors, you're like, oh, these are all wonderful. <laughs> your eyes light up. And so I'm going to follow the attraction, the natural attraction, attraction you have for things. Oh, wow. And particularly around color. And then I'm going to say, most people have closets where they've created islands of outfits. Oh, so yes. they'll buy something. It doesn't quite work with everything in their closet. So they'll buy something to go with it. And then pretty soon they're buying makeup to go with it. And then this will be a whole little styled outfit that has no integration into the wardrobe. Oh, not a good idea? Not a great idea. Start with a color palette. You know, say, just even if you randomly picked one, say, I don't know, you're a summer or you're a winter, but there's a consistent color palette that if you buy it, you will find that you have more integration in. And if you really love these colors and you start putting them together, you'll find that integration to a certain extent will happen in a self-organized way. Wow. And then as you become more accustomed to working with it, you'll have to go in and actually put some reason analysis as to how things are going together. But if you work a palette, you'll have more uh, interchangeability throughout your whole wardrobe. And more versatility and you can wear mix and match and have many more things going on, right? Just in the dark and <laughs> out the door, pretty good. <laughs> oh, I love it. All right. So tell us some other blunders that you see. Blunders, that, that sounds harsh. But, you know, things that you would say, okay, we should probably tackle this right away in someone's closet or someone's look? Well, I think since you've already brought up hair, I'm going to go with hair. Good. So many people will start off and say, how do you want your hair to be? Or how do you want? And they'll say, I want it easy. I don't want to have to do a lot with it. I don't want to, you know, use a lot of products. I don't want to spend a lot of time blow drying, you know? And so they'll have their list of what they don't want. But then we stop and we don't get to what we do want. Mm. We stop at easy care. So and that, does that tend to mean it is stylish or it's it not tends, really making a making? Yeah, a statement. it's not really making a statement and it's not really using something that you wear 24 yeah. seven in an effective way. Right. So, but the other thing too is that they'll go to the stylist and the stylist will start saying, oh, you know, this will only take you 20 minutes to blow out in the morning, which when you're in the stylist chair, you're thinking, oh, 20 minutes, that's not that hard, you know, and four products. When you're at home and you're wondering, you know, why your five-year-old can't find the shoes that were on their feet yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and the dog still needs a walk and you have to finish two emails and you have to get out the door, that 20 minutes for hair can get lost. Wow. So really going in and telling your stylist, look, 
one product, you know, 10 minutes for blow dry toms. What are my options with that criteria? Oh, wonderful. So So then they, by specifying that, they will truly give you a realistic, um, a cut that's going to fit that parameter and not say, sure, 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 this is easy. And, you know, you could never replicate that again. I think almost every woman I've ever met says, why can't I do what they do? Why doesn't it look like what they did when I left, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, Love that. and the other thing too, if you really want to know how your hair is going to look after a cut, tell them you'll blow it dry yourself in front of them oh, because yeah. it's a very different thing to blow your own hair dry when you are holding your arms up above your head, as opposed to someone standing behind you pulling at shoulder chest height. It's a very different thing. And when you're not able to do it, what, what, what should the hairdress, hairstylist do then cut it differently or sort of i think it's really important for the stylist to observe what you can and can't do and then to help you refine it to how your style works a lot of women over 50 can't keep their arms and can't keep their arms in the air that long plus to hold a blow dryer which is a heavy you know heavy enough with your arms over your head and a brush so those are the things where people will get down the road. Say you want a really simple makeup plan and the next thing you walk out with 25 products. Oh, I've and heard a very that. complicated makeup plan. It's where you as the consumer need to be informed and say, stop, we're going down the wrong road. Oh, see, this is Finding Brave. This is why I have this podcast. I mean, how many times is that how, that I've gone in uh, to who knows where, Chanel, when I'm feeling in that mood or whatever, and said, I just need an eyeliner. And I come out with 40 things. And when I get home, it's, it's you know, certainly doesn't replicate the 20 products they put on to make it look like that. And you're there with, and how many people have gone through this, you know? I love your tips. So let's talk about, and, and, and if there are things I'm not getting to, you tell me, you know, yeah. th- it would be a mistake if we ended this podcast without people knowing this. Tell, tell us for the men listening, what's the biggest thing that you feel executive men or men any, anywhere, entrepreneur or startup, um, what did they struggle with in developing a style? I think for men, again, it's an age related thing. We've, changed from looser clothing now to a very it's a very narrow fit in menswear right now the pant legs are narrower the pants are narrower and so they're starting to deal with some of the same problems women do they're becoming very size conscious they're starting to really notice the effects of wearing something that doesn't have the comfort level they're used to Wow. And in, in finding their style, what are their proportions? What are their colors? What's their style personality? And are they in it? Wow. So it's really each individual has a style patterning. Hmm. And it's, it's everything. Our style is everything. It's not just clothing. It's not our hair or our appearance. It's how we talk, we walk, we write, how we deal with things. So hmm. becoming comfortable with your own style and acknowledging it rather than looking out for someone else's style and hoping that's going to somehow miraculously come to you someday. Wow. These are so helpful. And you said, you know, how, how your style does uh, reflect so much about you. So when we get it right and we're in a workplace, what do you think it says to other people? What are people seeing that we're not seeing? Whether we're rocking it with the style or not, what, what are they... How does it impact other people? Well, one of the things, we're incredibly visual world now. So everybody is taking in so much visual information and assessing from that. So that when you're pulled together and you have an, a cohesive look, let's say, it, you're harmonious to look at. Mm, that's so a lovely will, word. People will keep their eyes on you longer. Wow. They'll be more interested in you. They'll look up from their phone and pay more attention. Harmony, if then. You, Harmony. If you capture this space so that everything is enhancing here, because clothing and appearance should be a great frame, but we still have to be the ones that come out. Mm-hmm. It sh- we should be ahead of the clothing. It shouldn't be all about that. But if we can capture this, people will listen to us. People mm-hmm. will make eye contact with us, and we'll have more credibility, and they'll have more trust in us. Oh, man. 
That's so we can really, it's a little like ballroom dancing. People think, you know, when you lead and follow someone, when you lead, someone's actually like pulling the follower along, but it's not. They're actually sending signals through their body. So if they move their hip one way, the person who's following will respond by moving their hip in the corresponding way to make the step. So if you're on a team and you need your team to assemble, you don't want to be sending signals that are off-putting. You want to be sending signals that bring people in and harmonize and collaborate the effort. Wow. I had no idea that it was harmony we were going for, you know, in terms of, I mean, on, on a deeper level, we sense as humans energy, don't we? So if oh, we you're out oh. of alignment, even if you put on a beautiful, stylish uh, outfit and you are not comfortable in it, that's the energy you'll, you'll be putting out. We'll, we'll mm-hmm. feel that, won't we? Oh, we will. Because there'll be a withdrawal in it. It doesn't. The imposter syndrome is very, uh, it's very much there. We all tend to, like, am I good enough to do this? Can I do it? So what you want to do is use your clothes to trigger that internal confidence so that you have presence to carry through. Like even in the back of your mind, it's like, oh, I'm a little out over my (laughs) skis on this. (laughs) But you know what? I'm feeling good. I can handle it. I'm okay. Wow. And people are responding to me as if I'm okay. That's also very important because we can't, you can't control the outside world. But because we all are humans, we have a human experience that's shared. So you know something works for you. Or when you click into people in that instant rapport, that's, that's where you're getting to, is to make the other person comfortable. That's what our manners are for, is to show someone they're respected and that we're here and we're engaged with them. Oh, I love this, these, this way of looking at it. You know, what you're saying brings to mind, I have a client who said, and she's incredibly talented and, and very well respected, but she said to me, I don't have executive presence, she said. Mm-hmm. And, and I said to her, I would have loved to hear you talk about it with her, but I said, okay, do you, can you think of anyone who does have executive presence? She said, yeah. And I said, well, what do they have? And she mm-hmm. said, they look like they belong there. And I said, do you feel like you do not belong there? And she said, yeah. So, you know, we talked in this way. It was going deeper than, you know, attire. But right. I believe, you know, style is many layers. But um, we looked at why does she feel she doesn't really belong there. But I think it's everything that you're touching on, you know. Does this, does this make you feel more of who you really are? I think do do your, does your style support who you are and, and more of it? Oh, is that right? Am I getting it? Yes, absolutely. And it's the, it's your best finding out what your best is. There's only so many clothing shapes that you can make clothing out of. I mean, a designer can stick an arm in the middle of the chest, but not many (laughs) people are going to buy it and it probably won't get to mass marketing. (laughs) But if you know what your best is, And then you know your best colors and you know your style personality. You can take all of those and enhance yourself to be memorable, to be recognizable, to have an impact. And Mm -hmm. just it is finding brave in that. It's like, okay, it feels a little awkward. You know, we both have a mutual friend who when she started out, you know, it was, it was hard for her to put on some of the high-end professional clothes. But as she started to realize, people really took her seriously. People were listening to her. She noticed that it was making an impact right. with connections she was making. And it also gets you indoors. Mm. That's so true. I mean, in that case, and so many, it's almost like putting on that article of clothing while she didn't feel a readiness for it. She realized that she was ready for that, you know, yeah. right? In a way. She was it, ready to at least go out there and ch- take the challenge on. Oh, I love it. So um, let me ask you one more thing. Uh, is there anything else we, we should be asking ourselves? So all the listeners, I hope, will, what should they do? Should they go to their closet? Should they choose, um, who, who is this new uh, 
feng shui declutterer. Is it Marie Kondo? You know, what sparks joy? I, I mean, I don't know. Is that a good way to look at it and say what sparks joy? Because there's energy to some clothes we have that it's time to throw them out, right? Yeah. And, and do you love it? And I really want you to get down to like really the brass tacks. Like if you're holding up a pair of underwear and you're just saying, oh, it's just a pair of underwear, but this underwear rides up and this underwear like seems to go circling around somehow. <laughs> Chasing this pair of underwear. No, that I don't love it. Why am I dealing with it? You know, take out your top most loved things out of your closet. Take them out of the closet and put them on a separate rack or put them aside. Mm. And then look at what's left. And then wow. go in and say, how many of these like do I like? How many of these do I kind of like? How many of these do I truly dislike? And how many of these do I just like can't stand and all they're doing is taking up room? And why do we hang on so much to clothes that like I, those uniformish suits that I had them for 10 years after yeah. I left corporate? Why did I do that? Is it because in a way you're not ready to let go of that part of yourself? I think so. I mean, not to get too far into the psychology of it because I'm not qualified for that, but I think that there's time and investment. And I think it's also hard to look at ourselves and say, well, I was wrong. I was completely wrong. What am I doing with this? All right. And we I think do that. because if there's a memory to a part of our life, like some people get stuck because that was such an incredible part of their life. They don't want to give the clothes up or some people keep them because they're like, I don't ever want to go back and I want to remember what that was like. Wow. Ooh. There's things like that. And for those type things, I say, move them out of your primary wardrobe. Create a working wardrobe of all clothes that you love to wear. Because what we do is, mm. how do you start your day in your closet? Right. And if you start your day in your closet with all of this regret, like, oh, why did I buy this? It doesn't go with anything. I never wear it anyway. Click, it goes back up. Oh, another one. It doesn't really fit right now. So we can create this whole wow. storyline where we can walk into our closet and go, this is my life. This is the story. Oh, so much better doing. that way. And if I love all of these things and they bring me confidence, clarity, you know, stamina, belief, why wouldn't I want to put these on every day? Like, Oh, I'm a champion. <laughs> you know, I would rather leave my closet like that than like, ugh. Skulking goodness. out, you know, disappointed in yourself once again. Yeah, oh. you know, like, ah, oh, good enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Now, one final thing, Audrey. I know people are going to be listening who might bristle at this, but where does money come into this? Some people will be listening saying, yeah, but I don't have, you know, $50,000 for a new wardrobe. What would you say about the money pushback? I would say that success has a look and it's available at any price point. Because oh, that's music to our ears. <laughs> what it is, is it's really about how you want to present yourself. If you want your clothes to look neat, clean, well pressed and then you can put the confidence and the enthusiasm behind it people will forget what you're wearing and go to you oh i love that if you want to supersede the clothing and make it all of everything should be a frame around you to enhance and highlight you it shouldn't be something you part of, oh i like you know that pair of shoes or i like that thing there was a gentleman um and i'm sorry i can't remember his name but he said anyone compliments my tie more than twice, I take it off and throw it away because the damn thing's getting too much attention. <laughs> really? Is he yeah, serious? It's all about me. I don't want to sell a tie. No oh. one's sending me a check for wearing their brand. So I want to sell me. I want people to notice me. Wow. That's, I got to think on that because when I do get a, a series of compliments on a sweater, I wear that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but in those cases, I do like the, uh, it's not something I hate and someone says that's good. And then I, feel no, like I mean, it's wear like, it, you know, <laughs> we all love compliments and I'm not yeah. saying the comment. It's just that it's like, they're not complimenting him on the whole. They're just peeing mm -hmm. out one part and like, really that's, you know, instead of like, you look great, that's a wonderful sweater on you. Wow. Oh, and the, the other issue we never talked about was weight and the struggles women have in their own self-perceptions. That'll be for the next time you come, Audrey, you please. I, I thank you. These tips, are, they're so juicy. I, I'm going to, I have a meeting I'm going to tonight. I, I swear to you, I'm going to take your advice. I'm going oh, yeah. to do 
a number of those things. I can't wait. Now, where can people learn more? Where can they, do you have, I know you do have tools where people can learn how to create their own style. Where does Yes, please come to my website at audreybolakstyle.com. Right. Um, if you have questions, there is a contact page where you can write your questions and send them to me and I'm more than happy to answer them. Oh, that's so generous. Thank you so yeah. much. Please take advantage of the website. We're developing all the time. We will have the style signature worksheets up oh, wow. in the next two weeks oh, and wow. then working towards getting the profile out for, um, to a bigger, broader audience. So I can't tell you how much I appreciate the opportunity to be here today and to talk to you, Kathy. Oh, thank thank you. you so much. I learned so much and I feel so energized by, by what you've shared. Thank you. Thank you. Keep us posted, everybody. Um, you know, do take Audrey up on uh, when people volunteer, you can contact me and I can answer your questions. Do it, do it. Uh, you just might have your whole style kind of revamped. So it's harmonious. Oh, I love it. So you're more in harmony and that is power, I think. And that is finding brave every day. So thanks everyone. We'll see you next time. And thank you, Audrey. So fun. Thank you.